بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم uh, we are uh, discussing today uh, ovarian tumors in discussing the diseases of the female genital tract i told you that we for our convenience divide these diseases into diseases of the vulva and vagina diseases of the cervix diseases of the uterus fallopian tubes and ovaries in uh, diseases of the ovaries uh, ovarian tumors uh, are very important before going to discuss the tumors of the ovary we uh, go to a brief physiological anatomy of the female ovary and you know that uh, we divide the female ovary on its cross section into an outer portion known as the cortex and an inner portion known as the medulla the medulla mainly contains blood vessels uh, and nerves while the cortex contains the ovarian follicles at the time of uh, birth a female child contains millions of small immature follicles known as the primordial follicles and these primordial follicles then develop and it is at the onset of puberty when the reproductive life starts the follicles mature due to secretion of uh, gonadotropic hormones from the anterior pituitary particularly the follicular stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormones and it is at puberty that the reproductive life of a female starts and a female starts continue continuing menstrual cycles now these primordial follicles develop into primary follicles and each primary follicle contain a primary oocyte and then it develops into the secondary follicle and secondary uh, oocyte and during the menstrual period or the menstrual cycle suppose on an average of 28 days of menstrual cycle what happens that at the end of the follicular phase usually on day 14 the mature graphene follicle ruptures and the secondary oocyte or the mature ovum is released from the ovary now normally if this mature oocyte gets this male sperm what happens that fertilization will occur the release of the ova from the graphene follicle uh, that occurs usually on the on day 14 is known as the ovulation and the follicle left behind is converted into uh, corpus luteum and the corpus luteum will now secrete uh, uh, hormones estrogens and progesterones which are uh, necessary for the uh, continuation of pregnancy if the uh, ovum is fertilized by a sperm uh, normally this fertilization comes in the fallopian tube and during the passage of the fertilized ovum through the fallopian tube where fertilization mainly occurs at the impolary region uh, this fertilized ovum goes through certain stages of uh, maturation and you first uh, I mean if it divides into two cells known as the blastomeres then into four cells then into eight blastomeres and at the time when it is 16 cell stage or there are 16 blastomeres this fertilized egg is now known as the uh, marola uh, the marola undergoes further development and develops into blastocyst and remember that this is the blastocyst form of the fertilized ovum that will get embedded in the uterine endometrium and from here the pregnancy will continue if fertilization doesn't occur the ova is lost during the next coming menstrual period 
Now, ovarian tumors are a little bit complicated, but for our convenience, we divide ovarian tumors into four types. Type 1 ovarian tumors are known as epithelial tumors and they arise from the surface epithelium, the outer covering of the ovary. The second class of tumors known as the germ cell tumors, they arise from the oocyte that lie inside the graphene follicle. There is a connective tissue in between the follicles and some tumors known as the sex card tumors or stromal tumors, they will arise from the uh, connective tissue or stroma in between the follicles. A fourth group of tumors are those that originate somewhere else in the body and get metastasized to the ovary and where they uh, uh, lie as secondaries metastatic tumors and they develop here. Now we can remember ovarian tumors uh, by making mnemonic in the form of three sentences. Sentence number one is that my sister began experiencing cancer. You remember this sentence, my sister began experiencing cancer and at the start of each word there is a capital letter. So we divide epithelial tumors into my mucinous tumors, M from mucinous tumors, sister S capital S from serous tumors, begun B Brunner tumors, experiencing C endometrial endometrial tumors and cancer clear cell tumors. So by remembering this sense, this, this uh, sentence, my sister began experiencing cancer, we can remember the name of the epithelial derived tumors of the ovary, which are mucinous tumors, serous tumors, Brunner tumors and endometrial tumors with clear cell tumors. Now let us come to the second part of the, this sentence. Doctor examined the cancer. So if we remember this sentence, uh, here the capital letter uh, at the start of each word will tell us about the germ cell tumors, the second type of ovarian tumors that arise from the oocyte lying inside the follicle. Doctor D. Disgerminoma. These tumors are number one disgerminomas. Examine E. Endodermal sinus or yoxate tumors. D. T teratomas and cancer. Doctor examined the cancer and C for from choriocarcinoma. Now the third class of tumors which are known as the stromal tumors are sex card tumors. We can remember their names by the assistance. She felt good. Right? She is from Sertoli Lydic cell tumors. Felt F for fibroma tecomas and good from granulosa tica cell tumors. So, uh, uh, if we remember uh, these three sentences, we can easily remember the three types of uh, tumors that are uh, present in the ovary and are ovarian tumors. Metastatic tumors may be any tumor that gets uh, uh, originated somewhere else in the body and uh, either through a hematogenous spread or lymphatic spread uh, or by any way comes to lie in the ovary and here develops into the tumor. Now how do we classify epithelial tumors? The various types of epithelial tumors for, for our convenience we divide them into three types. Epithelial tumors may be benign tumor. You know that what is a tumor? Actually a tumor is an abnormal growth and proliferation of cells. Cell growth and proliferation 
if you remember for a cell to divide it has to pass through the cell cycle and there are certain genes that regulate the cell division and cell proliferation and these genes they do not allow mutated cell or cells with uh, DNA damage or uh, disease cells to divide. So they are known as the tumor suppressor genes. And another group of genes uh, are the oncogenes that normally are involved uh, in controlling cellular divisions. But if mutation occurs somewhere, these oncogenes are converted then into proto-oncogenes and they then facilitate cellular growth uh, and proliferation without uh, regarding to the uh, normal cell cycle. And we know that any abnormal growth, uncontrolled cellular proliferation or neoplastic growth will, will result in a tumor. If this growth does not invade the surrounding tissue, if it is well encapsulated in most of the cases and if it doesn't spread or metastasize to other organs, we say this is benign tumor, easily treatable and not so serious. But if mutations steadily accumulate and make the tumor cells or the tumor to spread and invade locally the surrounding tissue and if it can get metastasized and cancer cells carried to other parts of the body where they uh, metastasize and form tumors and these the malignant tumor and benign tumor uh, histologically in benign tumor if we see under the microscope the cell in a the cells in a benign tumor they mostly resemble the original cells the original parenchymal cells but in a malignant tumor what happens that there are changes uh, for example, as we have studied uh, during when we were studying neoplasia, uh, uh, hyperchromatosis, uh, abnormal uh, cytoplasm, cy uh, nuclear cytoplasmic ratio and uh, presence of mitotic figures. So these are characteristics of the malignant tumors. A third class of tumor is known as the borderline tumors. And the borderline, borderline tumors sometime resemble benign tumors and sometimes they show uh, dysplasia, uh, anaplasia and then we can say that they are the pre-malignant uh, situations and uh, so in borderline tumors some tumors may resemble benign tumors and some of them may show or histological uh, changes in the cells and resemble the malignant tumors. Now coming back to our uh, variant tumors, uh, I told you that uh, today we will discuss the epithelial ovarian tu tumors. Uh, the sentence for remembering the names of the epithelial ovarian cancers as I said is that my sister began experiencing cancer. So M means mucinous tumors, S means serous tumors, B Brunner tumors, E endometrite tumors and C clear cell tumors. Now the major four types of tumors are the mucinous, serous, endometrite and Brunner tumors. Out of these tumors, two tumors, the mucinous tumors and serous tumors, they clearly arise from the surface epithelial cells of the ovary.
for the uh, so surface covering of the ovary and we say that purely they are of epithelial origin now the other two types of tumors that occur in the surface epithelium of the ovary are the endometrite tumors endometrite by that we mean that these tumors contain endometrial tissue which is normally present in the uh, uterus the innermost layer of the uterus is the endometrium but if uh, endometrial cells uh, come and lie in the uh, epithelial covering of the ovary and develop into tumors uh, then we call them as the endometrial tumors and uh, if you remember uh, uh, during endometriosis what happens that the normal endometrial tissue that is supposed to develop uh, on the inner lining of the uterus it comes to lie somewhere else outside the body of the uterus it may be uh, fallopian tube it, it may be uh, ovary it may be peritoneum and that uh, pathological situation is known as the endometriosis so if the endometrial come uh, endometrial cells comes to lie in the epithelial covering of the ovary and if they develop into tumors we call them as endometrial tumors these tumors mostly later on develop into cysts which are, which are uh, fluid filled sacs and if there is bleeding uh, into the cyst uh, it will appear uh, as to be filled by a uh, chocolate type of material known and the, these cysts are known as the chocolate cysts. The third type of tumor known as the Brunner tumors, they have cells like transitional epithelial cells. If you remember, normally the transitional epithelium lies in the urinary bladder where urine is collected through the ureters from the kidney and urine is stored. So, these are modified type of epithelial cells known as transitional epithelial cells and the fourth type of tumor that occur in the surface epithelium of the ovary contains the transitional epithelial cells and these tumors are known as the Brunner tumors. Now here in this slide we can see that the two types of tumor the mucinous tumors and the serous tumors they have clear origin from the ovarian epithelium while the other two tumors they are they do they lie in the surface epithelium of the ovary but they have a topic cell origin the endometrial tumors have endometrial cells that are normally present in the uterine endometrium and the Brunner or transitional tumors have the transitional epithelial cells that normally lie in the urinary bladder and we can say that these two tumors they are uh, they are of ectopic cell origin. Now, as you know that uh, the etiology of the cancer is not clearly understood. However, uh, we uh, understand some risk factors. And if you remember during ovulation, when a graphene follicle ruptures, automatically injury will occur the follicles become injured and later on during the healing process the cells will divide proliferate and will replace the lost cells so this process of damage due to uh, ovulation and rupture of the graphene follicle and later on the healing resolution or repair of the uh, follicular epithelial cells there are increased chances of mutations and as you know the tumors are the result of genetic mutations so suppose a female during her reproductive life passes through the menstrual period each month and during each menstrual period ovulation occurs and the follicles are ruptured so 
Suppose if we count the reproductive life of a female, which usually starts from 14 years and lasts for uh, 45 or 50 years where the female patient passes into menopause. So if we count the total ovulations that occur in a female, so a female that is sexually active passes through reproductive life having each month a menstrual cycle she will be having more ovulatory cycles and more ovulations if we compare it to another woman who have be become pregnant uh, during his reproductive life uh, so many times and you know that during pregnancy and then after pregnancy during breastfeeding there are no menstrual cycles and no ovulations and no chance of uh, follicular damage and repetalization. So these females no, that have pregnancies, uh, they uh, breastfeed their babies. So, compared to a woman who has never become pregnant, these patients, those that pass through pregnancies and uh, pass through breastfeeding, they have comparatively less number of ovulatory cycles and less number of ovulations. So, uh, it is clear from the research that uh, these patients uh, who have pregnancies in, his, is in her reproductive life uh, and if she uh, has breastfeeding uh, and uh, the third component is that if she is using oral contraceptives that will inhibit ovulation. So here in this case we have comparatively less number of ovulations, less number of genetic mutations and decreased risk for ovarian tumors. In comparison, a woman who never uh, become pregnant and uh, who automatically he will not uh, uh, undergo breastfeeding, so she will be having uh, an increased count and an increased number of ovulations uh, and uh, follicular damage and repair repetalization. So here the uh, chances of mutations and the chances of ovarian tumors they are increased and we say that those females they carry high risk. Now going to the characteristics of uh, the two uh, epi purely epithelial uh, derived tumors are the mucinous tumors and the serous tumors and as uh, we know that they are derived from the epithelial cells of the ovary. They are not of ectopic origin like the endometrial tumors which uh, are formed uh, by the endometrial tissue or by the, or the uh, Brunner tumors or transitional tumors which are formed from transitional epithelium that is normally found in the urinary bladder. The serous and mucinous tumors, they are purely derived from the epithelial cells of the ovary, from the epithelial covering. So, if these tumors contain clear fluid, clear serous fluid, we say that the cysts formed in the serous tumors contain uh, thin serous fluid. In comparison, the tumors uh, that form cysts and if they contain the mucine, which is uh, a jelly-like comparatively thick secretion of the uh, tumor cells are uh, from certain mesothelial surfaces, uh, they contain the mucus and they are therefore known as the mucinous tumors. Now, each serous tumors and mucinous tumors have benign tumors and malignant tumors. Now, so coming to the mucinous tumors, the benign mucinous 
ovarian epithelial tumor is known as the mucinous cyst adenoma and the mucinous cyst adenoma which is the benign epithelial derived ovarian tumor mostly it is unilateral by that we mean that it affects one ovary in comparison the benign serous cyst adenoma which are the uh, which is a part of the serous tumors so its benign tumor which contains the uh, serous fluid and which is known as the serous cyst adenoma it is mostly uh, bilateral uh, by that we mean that uh, it may occur in both the ovaries coming to the malignant counterparts uh, the mucinous tumors the malignant mucinous tumor is known as the malignant mucinous cyst adenocarcinoma benign is adenoma and malignant is the cyst adenocarcinoma the malignant tumor of the uh, serous uh, uh, group serous class will be known as the serous cyst adenocarcinoma so the malignant tumors of the serous uh, origin are of the mucinous origin uh, they are uh, commonly seen in post menopausal women after the woman has passed through its menopause at the age of 45 or 50 years and these tumors they induce uh, uh, a, a type of uh, inflammation and the Lining of these tumors, they are inflamed and are swollen due to collection of exudates. Now, the two characteristics of the serous and mucinous malignant tumors are that in malignant serous cyst adenocarcinoma, the histological uh, characteristic is the samoma body if you remember the samoma body uh, we discussed it uh, uh, when we were discussing the thyroid neoplasms and papillary carcinoma these are nothing but these are the world masses uh, that contain calcium and surrounded surrounded by phospholipids and uh, cellular debris so uh, it is a characteristic sign of the serous malignant uh, cyst adenoma of the epithelial derived tumors uh, coming to the malignant mucinous cyst adenoma cyst adenocarcinoma we see the pseudomyoma peritonei normally uh, we can see it uh, in a ct scan and uh, in this situation what happens that the mucus contained in this malignant cyst adenocarcinoma uh, if this cyst ruptures uh, the mucinous material it will spill out and will go into the uh, peritoneal cavity will get accumulated there and can give rise to uh, uh, complications and these are known as the pseudomexoma peritonei now Coming to the other two types of tumors which are of ectopic cell origin, we have endometrial tumors and transitional tumors. And as I told you that endometrial tumors are known as endometrial tumors because they contain the uh, uterine endometrial tissue and endometrial cells. And since they are of ectopic origin, uh, endometrium is not uh, a component of the ovary, it is a component of the uterus and these tumors when they develop cysts fluid filled sacs sometimes bleeding occurs blood accumulate in these uh, cysts and they appear uh, in the form of uh, something containing chocolate like material and they are known as the uh, chocolate cysts these malignant tumors as you know uh, that any malignant tumor 
uh, uh, as compared to a benign tumor, it will locally the, uh, invade uh, the tissue. It can get met metastasized and can give rise to uh, mets in other parts of the body. So the common site for the metastasis and spread of the endometrial tumors it is to the fallopian tubes and peri peritoneal cavity. The third part, the third type, the Brunner tumors are transitional tumors. They contain transitional epithelial cells which are modified epithelial cells normally found in the urinary bladder and uh, they are known as the uh, Brunner tumors. As compared to the endometrial malignant tumors, the transitional uh, malignant tumors are rare and mostly they do not form cysts but uh, are uh, in compact and solid forms. Now, uh, as uh, in the beginning uh, discussing the etiology of the tumors, I told you that a tumor will develop when there is abnormal, uncontrolled, excessive neoplastic cell proliferation and growth. So, physiologically, normally during the menstrual cycle, at the 14th day of a normal 28-day menstrual period, what happens that the graphene follicle ruptures? This occurs during ovulation when the OA is released. And then, to repair this ruptured, this damaged area of the follicle, the cell will undergo divisions. And these cellular divisions are, we can say, repeated cellular divisions is a risk for genetic mutations. So, if mutations develop during this cellular divisions, for example, uh, mutations in uh, proto, uh, proto oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes, there is increased risk of tumor formation. So, a female patient who is having less number of ovulations during his, her reproductive life, for example, uh, uh, if she becomes pregnant, she uh, goes into amenorrhea and there is no menstrual cycles, no ovulation, and uh, if the female uh, is uh, feeding her baby, breastfeeding, so during the breastfeeding period there is uh, no menstrual cycles and there is amenorrhea and no ovulations and moreover those female patients who use oral contraceptives that inhibit ovulations they comparatively they have decreased risk of ovarian tumors now <coughs> endometriosis is uh, uh, we have discussed it uh, that it is the development of endometrial tissue uh, outside the uterine cavity uh, so Particularly when we talk about the uh, endometrial tumors in endometriosis, the endometrial tissue develops in the ovary, uh, which is not a normal site for the endometrium and can uh, start uh, uncontrolled proliferation and give rise to the endometrial tumors. Polycystic ovarian syndrome, we have uh, studied it and uh, in polycystic ovarian syndrome, what happens that many follicles uh, uh, in the ovary, uh, they develop cysts and uh, there is uh, uh, unovulatory cycles and this polycystic ovarian syndrome which is basically a genetic uh, 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 or uh, a disease of genetic origin mostly with other risk factors also, uh, it, is, it also increases the risk of ovarian tumors. Two genes that are important and remember that the two genes, one is known as the BRCA1 and the other is the BRCA2. If they are mutated, these mutated genes can be transferred from the um, parents to their offsprings in an autosomal dominant manner autosomal dominant ma uh, manner. They are of autosomal uh, dominant uh, uh, trait 
like other than like autosomal recessive trait they are autosomal dominant uh, trait for their transference from the parents to the offsprings and remember that the mutations in brca1 and brca2 they are also involved in the carcino breast cancer tumors that occur in the female breast and as well as they provide a risk factor for the ovarian tumors also there is an another uh, familial syndrome known as the hereditary non polyposis colorectal cancer uh, which is also known as the lynch syndrome and people with this lynch syndrome uh, with this hereditary non polyposis colorectal cancer that we study in when we uh, discuss the uh, tumors of the gastrointestinal tract we study the lynch syndrome and here it is important to remember that these patients also have increased risk of ovarian tumors now coming to the symptoms uh, uh, symptoms and signs uh, varies from patient to patient most uh, of the times uh, the patient observe very little symptoms the symptoms are subtle and uh, they are not specific by that by what we mean that in the initial and start of the ovarian tumors uh, uh, there there are no such symptoms and signs that can uh, detect ovarian tumors in their initial phases but what happens that if the ovarian tumor grows they can cause abdominal distension there will be bloating there will be uh, abdominal or pelvic pain and particularly if due to the presence of tumors the ovaries undergo torsion so it will give rise to severe pain and sometimes fluid accumulates in the peritoneal cavity and will give rise to the ascites and if the tumors grow larger we can uh, feel abdominal masses and also these tumors can cause uh, because of their mass effect they can cause bowel obstruction and mostly these female um, experience severe pain during the intercourse and another important uh point here is uh, for uh, to remember is the sister mary joseph nadiu and this sister mary joseph nadiu develops in the umbilicus in the umbilical region and this will indicate the situation if an ovarian tumor has metastasized to the umbilicus this is known as the sister mary joseph nadiul now for the diagnosis we use certain uh, tumor markers uh, for example beta human coronary gonadal trapins and uh, we use trans vaginal ultrasound which is more informative than percutaneous ultrasound because uh, it uh, very closely detects problems in the uterus and uh, ovaries and fallopian tubes but the final diagnosis we will make it from examining a biopsy from the tumor under the microscope and it will be the microscopic examination that will tell us that the cells contained in a tumor are benign or malignant if they resemble the original cells if there is no dysplasia metaplasia or neoplasia we say if these are benign but if uh, the uh, cells have hyperchromatosis if uh, they have this uh, misshaped nuclei and if there is uh, uh, abnormal uh, cytoplasmic nuclear size ratio so these are the signs of tumors and the biopsy is the final documented proof with us to say that either the tumor is benign or malignant uh, ct and magnetic resonance uh, imaging scan we use uh, to see uh, the size and location uh, of the 
tumor and either metastasis are there or not. Now, coming to the treatment, if the tumor is localized and if it purely lies in the ovary, for example, CT shows us that the tumor has not metastasized. So, the simple way is to remove the ovary and if the female have already children, the um, ideal way is to remove the fallopian tubes also. But if the tumor has spread to other parts of the body, then surgery will be of no more help because even if we remove the ovary, the tumors that has metastasized to other parts of the body, it will uh, uh, develop. So, in this situation, we will use chemotherapy and we will use uh, radiotherapy by uh, through killing the cancer cells through radiation. And it varies from patient to patient that chemotherapy and radiotherapy is how much successful in a patient. But surgery, if the tumor is localized and if does not have metastasized, is the treatment of choice. Now, there is a, mm, another tumor marker which is known as the carbohydrate antigen 1 to 5. And the ovarian tumors produce this marker. And we can check the blood level of this tumor marker carbohydrate antigen 1 to 5 if we are treating the patient this will tell us the progress and uh, uh, the benefits of the treatment if it is benefiting the patient or not for example if, if its uh, level is decreasing we can say that uh, uh, our therapy or treatment is proving beneficial to the patient and if it doesn't decrease or if goes on increasing this may tell us about the recurrence and the uh, poor response of the patient. So this is the summary you can see the epithelial derived ovarian tumors are mucinous, serous which are of epithelial cell origin. The two ectopic cell origin tumors are the transitional uh, cell uh, transitional tumors and endometrial tumors and we have discussed the increase and decrease risk. So, uh, tumor may arise from the epithelium in ovary or it may arise from the six card stromal tumors or sometimes from the oocytes from the germ cells. The epithelial tumors are the most common type. Remember that out of all the ovarian tumors, the most common type of ovarian tumors are the epithelial tumors and they are more common in postmenopausal women, most uh, usually older than 40. The major types of epithelial tumors are serous, mucinous, endometrite and clear cell tumors which have uh, cyto, uh, uh, glycogen and lot of uh, cytoplasm uh, in their cells and each of them has a benign, a malignant and a borderline counterpart.